What do I need to teach to create this? What's an instruction for this? Draw the, keep it more to the leg and to the butt. So draw the right hip back. Draw the, nope. Okay, let's see. Okay. I do this, right? It's not the hip. It's not the hip. So here. If I tuck the tailbone, this is the potential. Keep it to the leg. What do you want the leg to do? But you don't want to say externally rotate because your students are going to be like, what? Simple. What do you want them to do? Inner thigh to outer thigh. Draw the butt up underneath. This is the hip up here, right? This is the hip. This is the butt. This can draw under, but this starts to come into the pelvis a little bit too much. Okay? So we want to rotate the top of the thigh bone in the hip socket. It's not just about reaching the torso. The torso goes along for the ride. The pelvis is moving. Do you remember which plane this is? The coronal plane. So the pelvis is tilting in the coronal plane, and as it's tilting in the coronal plane, to see that my torso is going along for the ride. Remember all that talk we had about if the top of the thigh bone isn't rotated, all of those misalignments happen, right? So that has to come. Is that the only thing? Yeah, that's one. That's one. Okay. Good. All right, then. Moving right along. I'll add on if there's information I have outside of this. So let's go around the room and start with the logo. Um, venous return is deoxygenated blood that needs to be transferred back up to the heart to be reoxygenated and go back up and do its thing. The same thing with lymph. Lymph carries the white the white cells of blood, and it also carries nourishment and nutrients, plasma, to the entire body. In any place above the heart, it freely drops back down to be refreshed. But in the limbs, it has to travel back up. And the way that it travels back up, and this is Jean Marie's explanation, so, you know, right of salt. Here is a leg, okay? And these are little valves in the, in the circulatory system that pulls blood as it's moving away from the heart. The way that blood, that blood gets brought back up to the heart to be refreshed is when we have a muscular contraction, when I'm standing upright. So like when I squeeze my legs now, what happens is one of these shunts kind of open up and it pushes blood back up and then again and again and again. But when we go upside down, all of those like valves, they just open up and the blood just kind of floods back from the limbs. That's why the guards in front of Buckingham Palace, they do isometric contractions. Because if they didn't do isometric contractions when they're standing that still, they would faint after a while. The same thing is when you're sitting on a plane for a long period of time, they tell you if you can't get up and stretch, to again, squeeze your legs, do some isometric contractions. It's the same thing. It's bringing the deoxygenated blood and lymph back up to the heart to be refreshed. When you go upside down, and the physiological benefits that I'm talking about today is when you're in an inversion for between three and five minutes, which is why we talk about them more with headstand and shoulder stand than we do with handstand and pinch myrasana. People can't tend to hold the um, handstand and pinch myrasana for as long a period of time. Um, when you go upside down, you may notice, especially in shoulder stand, because it's a little bit more calming to the nervous system, you may notice that your toes, if you stay in between three and five minutes, your toes start to tingle a little bit. That's because the blood pressure has changed. You have effectively turned yourself upside down. When you feel that pressure on your head, when you come upside down, like when you head stand or shoulder stand, there's... Um, a fear for a lot of people that blood is rushing up into the head. We have these valves, they're called baroreceptors, and they are designed to control the flow of blood to the head. So when we go upside down, that pressure that you're feeling is the blood kind of coming up against those baroreceptors, but then they um, allow only for certain amounts of blood to come into the head. I think that's, is that all I have to say about blood and 
But that's why it's so important. And I haven't had it. There was a class like last, I think it was last year, and it was a big class, and um, somebody in the back was coming up out of headstand and just she just bounded up to stand and she immediately passed out. And it's very, I mean, this is this is your physiology you're talking about. You've just changed your blood pressure, right? So if you come right back up and you don't give yourself time for the blood pressure to adjust, you're going to pass out, right? Um, that's why we always do child's pose. After, you always want to let the blood pressure and the energy settle for a little bit beforehand. And that's also why if somebody is experiencing extreme fear or hesitation about doing it, where they're starting to get very nervous about it, you don't want them to come up into a headstand because it's just going to amp up their blood pressure, right? Okay. I think that's all about blood. <clears throat> Question, this is very all very logical stuff. And again, draw generalization. We have the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and the descending colon. Right? Ascending colon moves up against gravity. And the transverse and the descending. When we go upside down into an inversion, this works into gravity. So everything that has to work up the ascending colon just kind of goes back to the transverse. And then when you come out of the inversion, it moves down the ascending colon. That's also why we always do things to the right side first. Because when I, every time I bring from down dog, my right foot up between the hands, I'm massaging the ascending colon. I'm massaging the ascending colon. And then we do it to the other side and massage the descending colon. So we're helping everything kind of move through. Okay? That's why we turn the right side first. That's why we do the right side first. From the physical perspective. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. Uh, reduce normal stress on the spinal column. The, the gateways for a lot of people to start to learn self-confidence, right? Do you guys remember the first time you ever came up into a headstand? or came up into a handstand. It's like, I remember the, like, the first time I actually did it. I was walking down the street after and I felt like everybody should know. <laughs> and to tell, but I just stood on my head, right? But those are, that's what these poses do because especially you guys. Now, all of the diagnostics for the inversions and all of those steps I gave you guys today for headstand, right? I have um, a document that I'm gonna email out to you that has all of the diagnosis, all the diagnostic poses that you would do to look at whether a person is ready to do that inversion, and then the step-by-step. -step. First you would do dolphin, then you would do this, then you would do the blocks of the wall, then you would do that, then you would do that. Okay, so I'll send that out tomorrow morning, so you'll have it. I have a question. Yeah. Do, you, do you get the benefit immediately? Because I've heard that you, like, the optimal time is three yeah. minutes, yeah. and that's like when you get all of the benefits, yeah. but do you get them regardless, like if you can only hold it? Like well, you have, to, you have to start where you are. You know, you have to start where you are. And there are ways you can do inversions to, it depends on what it is. So for example, to um, increase the circulation in the legs, to reduce edema, things like that, you can just throw your legs up the wall. It's going to have a calming effect on the digestive system, but it's not necessarily going to affect it as greatly as if you're completely upside down. So will you get benefit? Of course. You know, and you may get to three to five minutes, you may not. There are plenty of other ways. There are many people who have good digestive systems who have never gone upside down in their entire lives, so. Yeah, so, um, so yes and no. Yeah. Um, yes, so these are the ways that somebody who is experiencing you know, kind of the third chapter of the money Manipura, which is where we come into our ego identity and it's where we come up against strength and courage and fortitude and things like that. By bringing people through the process of learning an inversion and saying, okay, you can't do headstand, but now you're going to do dolphins. And that's your first step. And then they start to build confidence that they can do that. And then, oh, we're going to come to the wall and we're going to put a block in your back and look, your head is on the ground. 
and then eventually they get to the next step and the next step, and they may never get to actually doing a headstand, but they have shown themselves that they can take control of their body and bring themselves a little bit further on. And that has applications out in the rest of their lives, as it has for you guys. When you first did your first things, it was like, I didn't think I could do that. Let's see about this thing now, right? Okay. Um, common misalignments and risks. Let's carry on. Hands. I, and you guys, um, I don't know if you see this as well. One of the biggest things that people, they're so concerned with their arms that their legs are kind of like, like they have no clarity to, to their legs at all. And if that's happening, that's, I mean, these are heavy, right? So that's dead weight that your lumbar, that your lower back has to hold, and your shoulders and your neck have to hold, depending on whether your head is on the floor or not. So the legs and the real, the work of the legs, making them one leg, making sure the alignment is okay, but that there's a real reach of the legs is super important. Okay. In shoulder stand, chin drops. You can go upside down. If low blood pressure, low blood pressure is just as much of a contraindication for inversions as um, high blood pressures. I had a client years ago who had such low blood pressure, she couldn't even come into like prostrated Padottanasana with her like parallel, with her spine parallel to the floor. And it got to the point where they, she was so limited in what she could do, and she didn't want to go to a doctor. And I told her that until she went to a doctor, we really couldn't do anything. I couldn't do anything with her. Um, stand. And so any kind of blood pressure that's treated, and if a doctor says, if you're ever working with a client and they have higher low blood pressure, and they're not sure, tell them to ask their doctor if they can go upside down before you bring them upside down. Always be safe. 